is Rocky Marciano overrated? Well, first off, what do I mean by overrated? Do I rate Rocky Marciano very highly? No. But a lot of people rate Rocky Marciano as the best heavyweight of all time. If you read through some comments, watch some of his videos, you'll see people saying Rocky Marciano is the best heavyweight of all time. And if you look at any list of the top 10 heavyweights through history, he's usually ranked in the top 5, sometimes as high as even number 2 in the list is the second best heavyweight of all time. And it's 100% down to the fact that he's got a 49-0 record. That's that's pretty much it. Now, do I think Rocky Marciano should be on the list? Well, first off, I've got to say, for his time and for how the heavyweight division was classed at the time as being over 175 pounds, yes, Rocky Marciano was the best of his time. Clearly, he was beating everyone at, during his time and he was the best heavyweight of that time. But... Uh, Comparing him over all heavyweights before him and present definitely shouldn't be in the top 10. And here's why. Rocky Marciano fought in a very weak era, far weaker than, than Joe Lewis is or any other heavyweight you can imagine. Unless you go really far back in time, it was a very weak era. It was just after the Second World War and the, the era was really weak then because the average heavyweight weighed about 190 pounds and it was about six foot tall which is I mean if you compare that to a heavyweight today you know average heavyweight today is six foot four 235 pounds so literally 45 pounds heavier than what the average was back in Rocky Marciano's time and, and weight does matter I mean heavyweight boxing or well, boxing in general is divided by weight it's, it's very obvious that it's uh, Weight is a big advantage in heavyweight boxing. So, Rocky Marciano, by today's standards, was not even a heavyweight. He was a guy that was about 185 pounds, which is what light heavyweights, after they go through the dehydration uh, and the dehydration and the starvation process, and then they bulk up for 24 hours after they weigh in, that's what they come in at, about 185 pounds. So, People like Rocky Marciano should really be compared to people like Joe Calzaghe who fought at uh, light heavyweight and Bernard Hopkins and uh, Roy Jones Jr. and M type of guys. They shouldn't be getting compared to giants like Lennox Lewis, uh, the Klitschko's, Tyson Fury, uh, even, even people like Muhammad Ali. It would just be a complete... Muhammad Ali would be a complete giant during the 1950s, it'd be humongous. Not they would never see anything like it. A guy that's what six foot three, 215 pounds, who can move like he can. Uh, he, he, and Muhammad Ali would be a power puncher at that weight division. I think um, Muhammad Ali's KO rate for guys under 200 pounds was about 75 percent. So he'd be a big power puncher. Uh, he'd uh, be the the best power puncher that Rocky Marciano had ever faced at that weight. And let's just look at the guys that Rocky Marciano actually beat as a heavyweight champion. So first off, you have Jersey Walcott, okay? Jersey Walcott, only 196 pounds. He had less than a 50% KO rate, so he's feather-fisted. And he's 39 years old. And this is back when, if you were 39 years old in boxing, you really were a granddad. I mean, you really were old. And he fought him twice, and... By the way, Jersey Walcott was winning over twice as many rounds as Rocky Marciano before he got knocked out. Ronald Straza, 184 pounds. It's like I said, pretty much what a light heavyweight would weigh these days. Again, very feather fisted. Got a KO rate under 50%. Ezra Charles, 192 pounds. Again, very feather fisted. Don Cocknell, 203 pounds. Which is, would make him small even for a cruiserweight these days, because when cruiserweights come off the, the dehydration and starvation process, I mean, they've blown right up to 210, 215 pounds. 
Uh, again, he was very feather fisted. And you got Archie Moore here. Now, Archie Moore was the last guy Rocky Marciano faced. And it, yeah, okay, 38 years old. But also the fact that he started off as a welterweight. Archie Moore started off as a welterweight. And he only weighed 188 pounds when Rocky Marciano fought him as well. I mean, these are guys that he's beaten, and for beating these guys, he's been called the best, some people are calling him the best heavyweight of all time, and should say he should be on the top 10 of all time list. I don't see how. These guys aren't even heavyweights, and they're not they're not very good heavyweights, they're not very powerful heavyweights, they're not even very powerful light heavyweights or, or uh, cruiserweights, and a lot of them are old as well. And Archie Moore starting off as a welterweight. Another thing you've got to take into consideration as well with Rocky Marciano is the fact that Rocky Marciano only defended his title six times. Now, there's a whole bunch of champions that defended their titles a whole, whole bunch more times than only six. Joe Lewis successfully defended his title 25 times during his career. Vladimir Klitschko successfully defended his title 23 times during his career. Holmes, 20 times, Mahatma Dali, 19, Lennox Lewis, 13, Vitaly Klitschko, 13, uh, Mike Tyson, 10 times, Evander Holyfield, 14 times, Tommy Burns, 12 times, Jack Johnson, 9 times. Now, with Evander Holyfield there, you might think that's unusual saying 14 times, but what I'm doing is I'm including his cruiserweight fights in that because... Well, Rocky Marciano was obviously allowed to include his cruiserweight fights, so why not Vander Holyfield as well? As you, it doesn't matter what way you look at it, the quality of the opposition, even at cruiserweight and light heavyweight, was not very good. Uh, they were just light heavyweights and cruiserweights by today's standards. He never defended the title very many times. When it actually came up to um, Floyd Patterson, winning his title eliminator to fight Rocky Marciano and I think Floyd Patterson would have gave him a hell of a fight. I mean Rocky Mar I mean Floyd Patterson would give Rocky Marciano a hell of a fight because Floyd Patterson was a very, very skilled boxer, far better skilled than Rocky Marciano. Uh, Floyd Patterson was very good on his feet, could move well, very skilled defensive fighter, who could, could keep it up for fifteen rounds. Uh, I think he would just beat the hell out of Rocky Marciano. I think Floyd Patterson would just beat the hell out of Rocky Marciano. Uh, so when it came up to fighting him, Rocky Marciano gave up, vacated the belt. Floyd Patterson uh, took up the vacated belt and slowly but surely the heavyweight scene got stronger. Uh, if Rocky Marciano went on, he would be fighting guys like Sonny Liston. He would have no chance against Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston, 6'1", 84 inch reach, 215 punch, 15 pounds, you know, could punch like a horse can kick, you'd have no chance against him. Uh, I don't see any way you can have Rocky Marciano as the best champion of all time. Just because he won 49 fights with zero losses, the guy's not even a heavyweight. I mean, it's ridiculous. That's all I've got to really say on it.